Hello there. This week's question time is all about the lifting of the government's uh, restrictions in England and possibly in, in, in the other nations soon. And some of your questions about face coverings, etc. So the first question comes from Anonymous who says, I'm concerned that when the UK opens up more in July, social distancing and mask wearing will stop. Do you think it's important to carry on with this or not? And Steph asks, independent sage seem very concerned about the lifting of restrictions. I don't know who to believe. Uh, what are your thoughts? So I can say that I'm generally happy that the government has made this decision with a few reservations, because I think it signals that we're moving into uh, a new phase of working with this virus, realising that we can't get it to zero cases, we can't defend our country absolutely against it, and it's going to be an ongoing fight for the next few years against these new variants as we move into this endemic era. And I think we have to start learning to live with it and to minimise the risks. So ending these restrictions is going to give us definitely some freedoms, freedoms to see people, see relatives, move around, etc., etc. So generally a good idea. The other point is that vaccines, uh, according to our data and um, the government's own data, have shown they've virtually broken the link between uh, the previous number of cases and the number of deaths and hospitalizations. So yes, there are some deaths and hospitalizations, but they're nothing like near uh, as many as we were, we were seeing earlier in the year before the population was vaccinated. So um, despite that, people are still getting ill uh, with long COVID. And that's something on the app we've been following very closely from the beginning. And Researchers from uh, my university at King's and those at University College have looked at about 45,000 people now and given us some stats that agree with our own app that about one in 50 people on average who get infected will go on to get serious long-term long COVID symptoms lasting over three months that prevents them doing their daily activities. And so this really has uh, major health consequences and I think is the the reason and we should be thinking a bit differently about this. It's, it's not about death anymore. So uh, for me, face coverings are still a good idea in certain uh, circumstances. And our own app data showed that uh, in the US, people who were filling in the app using the masks had about a 60% protection against getting the virus but it also uh, prevents other people getting it even even more than that you spreading it to them and um, I would therefore recommend still carrying using it at high risk areas such as in healthcare settings and in uh, poorly ventilated crowded areas particularly all forms of pub all forms of public transport and aircraft and countries like Japan do this routinely um, virtually every year uh, in cold and flu season. It's become part of their normal culture and doesn't really seem to restrict their freedoms. So the other points are that the government needs to continue educating or to start educating people about the real symptoms of COVID. Uh, they're not just the classical three at the moment because of vaccines, because of younger people. They're really cold and flu-like symptoms and that's really important. And the other one is that when we feel unwell um, or in high risk situations, we need to keep testing ourselves with lateral flow tests. Thanks for that question. The next question comes from Sue, uh, who asks, we were told to wear masks to protect others, but if masks are no longer mandatory, is there any point in wearing one if the majority choose not to? And I guess that that's put it into context. I think, yes, there is absolutely still point in wearing them. Um, the death rates and hospitalizations are not as important, but just having large numbers of cases means we will have lots uh, of long COVID 
and wearing a mask will reduce uh, transmission. So even if uh, you're the only one on, on that bus who's wearing them, uh, it still is reducing uh, the transmission on that bus. And we want to spread the, reduce the spread of the virus. Now, um, this virus is still very much out there. You know, we're getting currently 30 to 40,000 cases a day. And the Delta virus is in, incredibly transmissible. Even a tiny droplet is likely to stick on you and uh, cause infection. And as we know, it's even, it is affecting uh, <clears throat> perhaps about one in 10 people who've had uh, full vaccination. So the, the real risk is not just dying, it's the potential of, of, of this long COVID. And we're defining that as having a problem for longer than three months that is really debilitating. And large numbers uh, are, are getting it every day. Uh, current figures are, are around 700 people a day are getting that. Now, the effectiveness of masks has been shown clearly by our US colleagues working with our app data. They showed that social distancing works, but masks also work in addition to that, reducing your risk of infection by about 60%. And we know it works even better in terms of uh, transmission. We also did a UK study of healthcare workers showing that those in the initial first wave who weren't given proper PPI had up to five times the risk of infection themselves. So um, if it doesn't bother you, uh, it's definitely still keep wearing a mask, even if um, you can't convince others to do so. Another mask question is from uh, someone who wants to remain anonymous, who says, how can mask wearing be a personal choice if it protects other people from you rather than protecting you from other people? So good philosophical question here. And I think since we first started talking about masks, it's been an incredibly contentious, controversial subject in this country, uh, unlike in Asian countries. And I know even sadly, some of my colleagues have, have had death threats just from giving their personal opinions about what they think. And um, I, I think we have to see face masks um, in, in a wider area because it, it does two things. It, it, it does protect the person wearing them as well as protecting other people. Now, it might protect other people more, but it still does protect you uh, to some extent. So we've got to see it in a it, working in both directions. Now, personally, I've never really understood the, um, ad, you know, these adverse reactions to wearing a mask. Um, Maybe that's because I'm a doctor and I see doctors and nurses wearing them sometimes all day for most of their career. And they just say that's that's part of, of what they do and they're doing it to protect people. And I think we all want our surgeons and our dentists to uh, keep wearing them uh, because that just uh, seems to make common sense. And uh, I think this, this whole debate really... Um, boils down to personal responsibility and uh, personal choice. Now, I think businesses should be given uh, much more guidance by the government to uh, inform them and, and just let them know how they should be working as a business for their employees, should they be telling employees to wear masks, and also for businesses that have customers coming in off the street. Um, I think they should have the right to uh, decide how they want to work in their premises uh, if they want to. And I was getting my hair cut the other day and chatted to my barber. He said, well, regardless of what the government says, uh, I've got used to wearing uh, masks now, so uh, I, I'm going to continue uh, wearing mine, and I think many of my other colleagues are. So I think it, it this just makes uh, common sense. And hopefully... We we'll realise we don't need to wear them all the time, and but we should be wearing them in high risk situations. John asks a question: What are the typical characteristics of someone who gets infected 
after having had both uh, vaccine shots. And we're collecting this data thanks to all you lot out there sending us your symptoms. And we've compiled a list every 30 days of the commonest ones that you're uh, telling us about. And the number one is headache followed by runny nose, sneezing, sore throat. And then finally, one that seems to change uh, week to week, uh, but is currently loss of smell or taste. So all these resemble a, a bad cold or a mild flu, but you can see we're not getting fever, we're not getting uh, the cough, the shortness of breath uh, in people who didn't have the vaccine. So it is really very different. So it's very important. We'd like to get the government to start telling people about this and uh, acting more responsibly. But in the meantime, if you do have these symptoms, stay at home, get a lateral flow test or uh, contact us to get a PCR test and do tell other people about these symptoms.